broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across the island chain. This special edition is hosted by four brand new Hikino schools from rural communities on Hawaii Island. Kuokala Public Charter School, Mililiihi Pu'u Virtual Academy in Mililiihi. Kanua Kaino Learning Ohana in Waimeo. Ka'u High School and Pahala Elementary in Pahala. In Volcano School of Arts and Sciences in Volcano. You'll learn about our schools and our communities. And you'll get a behind-the-scenes look at the workshops held at each of the Big Island schools by PBS Hawaii's Hikino training team. Plus, stories from St. Francis School, Aliamanu Middle School, Punahou School, and Mid-Pacific Institute on Oahu. And Island School on Kauai. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hikino. Can do! Over the course of one week, PBS Hawaii's Hiki no training team held workshops at the four Hawaii Island schools who are hosting this episode. The first stop was at the remote fishing village of Mililii, about an hour and a half drive from the Kona airport. I'm standing at the satellite site of Mililii Hipu'u Virtual Academy of Kuokala Public Charter Schools. This is our second year at the site. Kuokala is originally located in coastal Puna on the other side of the Big Island. The virtual academy called Hibu started three years ago on the island of Hawaii. The goal of the program is to provide a rigorous online blended curriculum for students on the Big Island from grades 3rd to 12. In 2012, the community of Middle East decided to get access to better education for the kids, and in their first year, 15 students enrolled. However, this year our site has about 25 students enrolled that can come and receive support and guidance from the online curriculum. We also have hands-on project-based learning on the site for our students. We have our own highly qualified teacher and one educational assistant and a few project teachers who support project-based learning in Bilili. And now, here's our story about one of the founding teachers of the Bilili Hipu'u Virtual Academy. Milili is located in the western slopes of Mauna Loa on the southernmost portion of the Big Island. For generations, the families of Milili have made their living from the sea. Kaimi Kaupiko was born in Milili in 1983. The Kaupiko family has lived in Milili for generations and made their living through fishing. I'm 31 years old and I am from the last fishing village in the state of Hawaii called Milili. I grew up here and back in the early 90s, I really learned to enjoy my environment. Because we're an isolated place, all of us kids in the village kind of had to create our own world. In a sense that we had to find the um, fun and laughter out of going in the environment, in swimming, going to the beach, hiking. A lot of us, all, we all fished with the family. So growing up, that was part of our life, was, was having fun in the elements and the environment, um, and also learning how to survive. In 2010, Kaimi returned to Mililii to help with his family's transportation business and to give a helping hand to his parents. In doing so, he was able to follow his dream of opening a school for the children of Mililii with the help of his friend, Levelen Kaupu. Um, Kaimi and I grew up together and graduated from Konawaina High School in 2001. And because of our experiences in college and um, our traveling experiences as well, we were inspired to come back to Minolii to establish educational opportunities to encourage the children of our village to pursue higher education and to also get out and explore the world. So we decided to start a charter school program. Um, however, uh, the difficulties with that process kind of um, prevented us to get that established and uh, we decided to work with a charter school in Puna named Kuokala and through their virtual academy we were able to enroll the students in Mililii and have it as a site for the program. 24 children now attend the Mililii Hipu'u Virtual Academy of Kuokala Public Charter School. Three students are now expected to graduate this year and we are looking forward to the rest of 2014. 
This is Lana Keela Caldwell from Mililii Hipu'u Virtual Academy for Hikino. Here we are in Ahupua Mililii on the Big Island of Hawaii on the western slopes of Mauna Loa. The village has made a living from the sea for generations. Mililii has even been called the last fishing village in Hawaii. A majority of the residents here in the village are of Native Hawaiian ancestry. Even today, many of the families still practice the traditional ways of opelu fishing. Opelu is a fish very similar to a mackerel and are attracted by a bait ball made of taro and pumpkin. They are then lured and captured using traditional cone-shaped nets, after which the fishermen of Kanaka Levaio will dry and trade the opelu for a living. We take you now to the island of Oahu, where students from St. Francis School introduce us to a mild-mannered school employee who leads a secret action-packed life off campus. So one side saw, one side saw, saw. Serving students in the cafeteria might seem like a job for an ordinary person, but there's often more to someone than meets the eye. Grant Miyashiro, food service manager for the St. Francis School cafeteria, serves students their daily meals. What most students and faculty don't know is that Grant is also a certified stuntman. Actually, becoming a stuntman actually fell on top of me from a friend, um, Kevin Wan. He was actually Ninja EX for um, Mr. Aaron Yamasato's uh, Ninja EX television series on OC16 a whole bunch of years back. We used to do martial arts together in college, and he said, I need some guys to take some falls, and so we were there. And that's how it started to develop. But from there is how it all, this whole thing happened. One thing led to another and we started doing it for independent movies. Don't you want to know what your God keeps from you? I think I just fell in love with being on the set, being part of the movies. Just being on set is so much fun for me. It could be anything from just doing a simple stunt to actually acting or even directing. My biggest fear was not being able to accomplish what needed to get done and also not being able to be successful. Because of that fear, it stopped me from doing this earlier. I've been doing it for 10 years now and I'm in my early 40s. If I did this like 10 years earlier, who knows where I'd be right now. Even with his late start and lack of resources, Grant found the motivation and support he needed to start his stunt group, the Ninja Monkeys. There was no opportunities for me to actually do this, per se. I didn't have the connections that I developed over the years recently. The Ninja Monkeys are uh, stunt choreographers and trainers. There are a bunch of friends of mine from college, um, Chad Okumura, Ronald Matsushige, Danny Shin, Ducky Agena, uh, Kevin Wan. We're uh, like the co-managers of the Ninja Monkeys. And they've helped me over the years develop as a person. They helped me also get over the fear of just not stopping. It helps when you have friends there to motivate you, to move you along, to push you forward whenever you need to. They picked me up when I was down and they said don't stop. And so they really helped me out throughout the whole process. The particular event that changed it was actually doing the first Battle of the Minions. Battle of the Minions was a, a movie written by Jeff Katz for a bunch of angels and demons fighting out with one another. Um, that for me was probably like the big break for me. I was acting in that, I was doing stunts, we were doing choreography, the whole thing. Since it's an independent movie, you wear more than one hat you know, for these movies. So from there, I think that was the very beginning of doing more stunt work, acting. And now I'm starting to direct now. I think the most important character for me is not stopping. Just to keep going regardless of how much I got hurt. Um, just to keep going and realizing my limitations, but not letting those limitations totally stop me from doing what needed to get done. Once I started, I just didn't quit. I never stopped. Regardless of how much I got hurt, regardless of how much pain I went through, I just kept on going. It doesn't stop there. You just keep on developing and getting better. Pushing past the limit has made Grant into the person he is today. Even with setbacks and obstacles, his determination and passion for life continue to move him toward a future of possibilities. This is Victoria Ramos reporting from St. Francis School for Hikino. For their next workshop, the Hikino training team traveled north to work with the students at Kanawoka Aina in the town of Waimeo. We're standing on the campus of Kanawoka Aina New Century Public Charter School in the town of Waimeo on Hawaii Island. Behind me is Mauna Kea. This new Century Public Charter School was founded in 2000 by Antiku Kahakalao. 
It was her dream and desire to be able to teach Hawaiian culture and make learning fun. Kano is a Hawaiian-focused charter school serving grades K through 12. Along with our regular subjects like math and English, Kano teaches Hawaiian values, language, and the ways of our kupuna. This has given our students hope that they could be successful in our community. Kuli Aikanu. Kuli Aikanu is our school's motto, which reminds us to strive to reach our highest and always do our best. One of the traditions at our school is the annual hula drama, or hoike, performed by students to an audience of family members. It is a celebration, a hoike that our kupuna did thousands of years ago to measure what someone had learned. Hula drama is a display of the lessons and skills that our students acquire throughout the school year. The students create their own mele, oli, or hula. With the help of our families, we make our own attire and gather materials for our adornments. Everything ties into protocol. This hoike tells a story about our island and it keeps the Hawaiian culture alive. Our next story comes from the Salt Lake District of Oahu where the students at Liamon Middle School examine the very critical transition that every student goes through. The season of spring often reminds us that change is just around the corner. Flowers bud, trees bloom, and birds migrate. In schools across Hawaii, students are also going through changes of their own. In elementary school, students are getting ready to take the next big step in life, middle school. At Aliamanu Elementary, the sixth graders are preparing for their transition over to Aliamanu Middle. When I first get into middle school, I think like everything, ev everything's gonna be different. I'll be older, things will be new. We'll have to start class, like doing different classes and not stay in one place at once. So it'll probably be a little bit harder than it is now. I've heard that middle school is tough, very tough. I expect like a new chapter in life since middle school has a lot of classes then um, elementary school like this one doesn't have any classes at all you have to know when to go you have to like memorize everything elementary school is actually pretty hard too so I'm expect expecting a lot in middle school some students have fears of being teased bullied or not fitting in when they enter middle school uh, I'm scared of tall people making fun of my size I just fear that like some kids will be mean to me of how short or tall I am. I am pretty afraid of going to middle school because I feel like everything is going to change between remembering which classes to go to on which days and how to navigate around the school. The students aren't going it alone though. At each school level, teachers, counselors, and registrars are there for support. They make sure there are certain procedures in place to make the transitions go smoothly. I'm kind of the person that helps coordinate and get different people involved to help all our new um, students that come in from our feeder schools. Some of the sixth graders ask about you know, which classes are they going to take. The, the things that they're worried about is they may try to sign up for 12 classes or they try to pick up one class and think they're only going to take that. These incoming students may feel overwhelmed. However, some middle schools, such as Ali Manu Middle, ease the anxiety by scheduling the first day of school for seventh grade only. That first day, uh, they meet with their teachers and they take a tour of the school on that first day. And then the second day, then we have eighth graders, so we have both grades. But that makes it really nice for them to not be so intimidated by eighth graders, should we say. Change is always an intimidating thing, especially if you're leaving the secure surroundings of elementary school. But one thing is for certain, we all have to grow up and move on with our lives. From Alimanu Middle School, I'm Chelsea Javier for Hikino. Action! The next stop for PBS Hawaii's Hikino training team was in the plantation town of Pahala in the vast district of Kau. We are standing at the campus of Kau High Pahala Elementary School, located in the town of Pahala in the district of Kau. Our school was established in 1881. At the time, the Kau Sugar Company, located in Pahala, was one of the largest sugar plantations in the state. Its workers wanted their children to have a high school education, and so the school was built, making our school the oldest school on the Big Island and the third oldest high school in the state of Hawaii after Lahaina Luna High School and McKinley High School was established. 
Our next story takes us to the Garden Isle, where students from Island School revealed that Kauai is one of the best places on Earth to observe a legendary bird, the albatross. The Laysan albatross, with a population of nearly 2.5 million birds, was absent from the main Hawaiian Islands since the arrival of the first humans. In the 1970s, for reasons not yet verified, these animals of the air flew back to their ancient Kauai nesting grounds. They're extraordinary. They're beautiful. They're, uh, they nest almost nowhere where people can watch them. So here on Kauai, uh, we have the opportunity to witness their lives in a way that most other people never get a chance to. These birds have traits that human parents strive for. They have an amazing set of characteristics that humans respect. They don't hide from any weather the wind, the, the world throws at them. They are loyal and faithful to their chicks, their families, their mates. Um, they are affectionate. They, when you see them together, when you see the mates reunite, there's no question that they're being affectionate to each other. They go off, the, in fact, the ones that have chosen to mate but don't have an egg this year go off and make out in the woods. There's no question that's what they're doing. Um, and then both the parents, both the mom and the dad, share absolutely equally in the duties. They both tend the egg. They both feed the baby. They work really hard. They fly from here to Alaska and back in order to find enough food to feed their babies. So they're hardworking parents. That's why they only always have one baby, because two is impossible. The trade winds of Kauai may be one of the reasons why these birds have returned to our North Shore. Because they ride the wind for days on end without ever flapping their wings. They, they can go for weeks and even more than a month without eating because they spend zero calories flying. As opposed to a hummingbird, for example, that could die of starvation in a day because it flaps constantly, um, albatross can go days and days without flapping. So they need the wind. The wind it carries them places and gravity carries them places. So they fly low over the ocean, sort of tacking like this over the ocean till they get to places where the wind hits Kauai. These birds brought their own style back to Kauai, a style that never flies south for the winter. This is Jacob Bassinger of Island School on Kauai for Hiki No. We're back at Ka'u High and Pahala Elementary School, which serves the entire district of Ka'u. Ka'u is the largest district in the state of Hawaii. At 922.2 square miles, it is almost twice the size of the island of Oahu, which is 596.7 square miles. As you can imagine, a large percentage of our students have to travel long distances to get to school every day. For example, Students who live in South Point travel one hour and 15 minutes each way on the school bus without traffic. Our next story comes to us from the Manoa District of Oahu, where students from Punahou School shine the spotlight on an iconic figure in Hawaii's classical music scene. Pianist and organist Bibi Freitas is a musical icon here in Hawaii. She has taught both accompaniment and piano classes at the University of Hawaii and is a much desired accompanist for singers. Bibi is currently the head of music at the Hawaii Opera Theater. In addition, she often plays at First Presbyterian Church and is very well known at Pono School for playing music for chapel gatherings. Before college, I would practice my maybe 20 minutes, half hour a day. I just felt it was something on the side. And when I got to college, I was planning to go into medicine or math or English. I was going to be a scholar. I thought, well, I'll just keep on taking piano lessons. I'll just take them because I've always played piano. And I was fortunate enough to be assigned to a teacher who I, I describe it as he turned the black and white keys and the black and white notes on the, on the page into Technicolor. And the world of music came to life for me. Mrs. Freitas was first asked to audition for the position of organist at Punahou a little over 30 years ago. She passed the audition and has been with Punahou ever since then, playing for students from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. I think music is an expression of the inside feelings that we have without having to use words all the time. 
I think it sets a tone for the mood of the of the that particular chapel. Sometimes it's playful. Sometimes there are dramas that are presented. Sometimes I'm asked to provide things to accompany their ideas. Like if they climb up a hill, I can play music that takes them up a hill. If they're beside a river bank, I can do that. I can try to make something that will lead your imagination and enhance the words that are being spoken. Then there are songs that lead us into worshipful or reflective ideas in the hymns, in the songs that we sing. Mostly what I'm trying to do is have them enjoy themselves, have them experience something that gets into their heart, that gets into their imagination. They may not realize it or they may say, hmm, that was wonderful. I don't want it to draw attention. That's the way I'd like to have people think about what I'm doing with my music. It's my life. Why not invest the time? Why not invest the effort? If I'm going to be there, I certainly ought to enjoy myself. I certainly ought to make it a good experience. I've known people, they work. They work and they work hard, but they don't have a lot of fun. I'm sure you know some people who are like that. I'm sure we all do. But I am lucky enough to play. I work at something that's called playing the organ playing the piano, playing music. So I play while I'm working. I just, I love it. Mrs. Freitas clearly enjoys sharing her gift with others and will continue to touch countless lives through her music. I'm Troy Noka reporting for Cornell School for Hiki No. The final Hawaii Island home base school for this episode is Volcano School of Arts and Sciences in Volcano. Action. Aloha. I'm here at Volcano School of Arts and Sciences. PBS Hawaii's Hikino training team braved the cold and rain to train us on how to be a home base school. Aloha. I'm here at Volcano School of Arts and Sciences. Our school was founded in 2001 with a few students, age, kindergarten through sixth grade. Today we occupy two sites in Volcano Village, just across the street from the park, and have 182 students who come from Mountain View to Ocean View. Our final story takes us to the island of Oahu, where students from Mid-Pacific Institute introduce us to a Waikiki street performer who uses art as his co-star. I discovered early on as a young boy that I loved to paint, I loved to draw, and, uh, and so that was sort of like my way to lose myself into my own little world. Wayne Gabilo is a self-taught street artist who performs in Waikiki. Art in motion, as he calls it, incorporates music, dancing, and audience participation to keep the crowd entertained. A key feature of his style is that it looks like a chaotic mess of flying paint, ripped up newspaper, and bottle caps. It looks like something any child could do, until the final product is revealed. Wayne and his brother started out in entertainment as a juggling act, but as a painter, he got his idea for a show while observing a bartender, flipping bottles while making drinks. Then right there the light bulb went up. Oh, maybe I should do a show while I'm painting. Wayne began performing in Kalakaua Avenue in Waikiki, but it wasn't a smooth journey. Ironically, it was his success at attracting a crowd that led him to almost stop painting and start looking for another line of work. Eventually, the crowds would get bigger and bigger and bigger. That affected me because of the police would shut down my show. I had to have a bodyguard watch so the crowd wouldn't get too big. And then eventually I did get get a citation for the police. 
that caused me to stop painting on Waikiki. A chance meeting with the chef from Tanaka of Tokyo took him to King's Village. The chef offered Wayne a job because he thought Wayne's juggling ability made him a good candidate to become a teppanyaki chef. But Wayne saw another opportunity to paint. A, an idea came in my head. But this looks like a nice place to paint. I wonder if I talk to the management, they'll let me do my show here. Wayne was able to convince management to give him a shot at performing at King's Village. So they said, well, we can try you out for one week. And that's all I needed, a chance. That one week turned into months, then years. Today, Wayne has been at King's Village for the past 12 years and even has a gallery there. Wayne Gabilo believes that art can be anything that you have a passion for. Through his art, he hopes to inspire others to find their passions. This is Daniel Cam from Mid-Pacific Institute for Hiki No. I'm here at Volcano Charter School's historic KK Lani campus, located in the heart of Volcano Village. Volcano Village is a small community made up of artists, scientists, and other creative people who find inspiration in our unique Ohia forest. You can always find something interesting happening at the Volcano Arts Center, our local businesses, and our famous farmers market, Sunday mornings at Cooper Center. Thank you for watching a special episode hosted by four brand new Hikino schools on Hawaii Island. Remember, all the stories in this program have been shot, edited, and written by students like us. We hope you enjoyed watching them as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode to see more proof that Hawaii students hiki no. Can, Can do. do. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.